OK, so here comes the most important property of symmetric matrices. And it has to do with the eigenvalues of the symmetric matrices. When we solve the eigenvalue problem for a matrix, you know that things typically, for a non-symmetric matrix, for an arbitrary matrix, you know that things could go wrong in two ways. Number one, you could get complex roots. And then you're short on eigenvalues. Number two, the matrix can be defective, which means, yes, you may be able to find your zeros and your eigenvalues, but you might find that an particular eigenvalue is double or triple eigenvalue, but the corresponding eigenspace is only one-dimensional, or in the case of a triple eigenvalue, two-dimensional. Not enough eigenvectors for the eigenvalue that you found. These are the two things that can go quote-unquote wrong with arbitrary matrices. Well, with symmetric matrices, this is not possible. There is a relatively simple theorem, whose proof we'll omit for now, we'll come back to it later, that states that if a matrix is symmetric, it has precisely n real eigenvalues and n linearly independent eigenvectors. In other words, the defective case is not possible. The, the geometric multiplicity of the eigenvalue will always match the algebraic multiplicity of the eigenvalue. So all of those quote unquote problems, of course I don't want to call them problems and of course I don't want to call it going wrong because it is what it is, but I'm just trying to make it uh, a little bit more dynamic. So when you have a symmetric matrix, it will always have n eigenvalues and all of the corresponding eigenvectors that you will need. That will go without proof, just accept it for now as a true statement. But there is addition, there's an additional glorious property of eigenvectors cor corresponding to those eigenvalues for symmetric matrices. They are orthogonal. When they correspond to distinct eigenvalues, eigenvectors corresponding to distinct eigenvalues for symmetric matrices are orthogonal. Now when I say, when I say orthogonal, I know that you immediately think to yourselves, with respect to what in a product? So this entire discussion for this class and the previous is all based on the standard inner product, much to, much, much to my chagrin. So we'll go back to general inner products in the next lecture. This is the last lecture that takes place exclusively with respect to the standard inner product. And maybe that's appropriate because we're trying to talk about certain special properties of matrices for which the standard inner product plays a very particular role. It goes into the very mechanics of matrix multiplication. And in any case, all of these fundamental facts can be generalized very easily in a very straightforward way to an arbitrary inner product. So it's okay to start the discussion here. So what I will do right now is that I will prove to you that eigenvectors corresponding to distinct eigenvalues are orthogonal with respect to the standard in a product. Here is the proof. Suppose that x and y are the two eigenvectors corresponding to the distinct eigenvalues lambda 1 and lambda 2. Then here's how it's summarized in algebraic expressions. Ax is lambda 1 x. That's what it means that x is an eigenvector of a corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda 1. y corresponds to the eigenvalue lambda 2. Now, I will manipulate both of these expressions in corresponding ways. I will multiply this one by y transpose on the left. And do you see what we have here? This is y dotted with x. This is the inner product of y and x with respect to the standard in the product. If it wasn't a standard product, this would be a little different. It, it would look like what we'll discuss in exactly a week and a half. OK. This, of course, I'll multiply by x transpose. And this becomes x transpose y. So this is x dotted with y, and this is x dotted with y. This is a number. If this looks to you like these two numbers are different, just take the transposes of both sides. Okay? In fact, let's do it. Let's take this 
here's what we're going to do. We're going to keep the, this expression intact. And we'll take the transposes of the both sides of both sides of this expression and write it underneath. Now we know exactly what happens. You have to take the product of the individual transposes in the opposite order. So this becomes, and lo and behold, these two are the exact same thing. Not at all surprising, especially once you get used to this sort of thing. I mean, it's just a number. Well, it being just a number is not enough. But the fact that asymmetric is what makes it happen. Equals lambda 1, same thing here, x transpose y. x transpose y. OK, perfect. Now I'm going to subtract one from the other. And on the left side, I get 0. Obviously, these two expressions are the same. And on the right-hand side, I get the dot product gets factored out. Now, I said the eigenvalues are distinct. So this is not 0. And because the product is 0, x transpose y must be 0. In other words, well, not in other words. I'm not even sure why I'm writing it. X is orthogonal to y in the sense of the standard in a product. I shouldn't have written this because this says the exact same thing. This is just frivolous use of the symbol, gratuitous use of this symbol. So there we go. We've proven that if the eigenvalues are distinct, the corresponding eigenvectors are orthogonal to each other. So if a symmetric matrix has n distinct eigenvalues, all of its eigenvectors are orthogonal to each other. What if the symmetric matrix doesn't have distinct eigenvalues? What if there is a double eigenvalue and there is a whole, so in other words, there is a whole eigenspace corresponding to that eigenvalue? Well, it's very simple. That eigenspace will be orthogonal to any other eigenspace as we proved here. And within that eigenspace, I can easily choose my two eigenvectors to be orthogonal. Maybe first I'll choose them randomly, and then I'll use Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization to make them orthogonal. So the statement is that the eigenvectors of a symmetric transformation are either orthogonal to begin with, or can be chosen to be orthogonal. And you, know, you only need to add this clause for the case of multiple eigenvalues. So I will now prove to you using the eigenvalue decomposition, the reason I wanted you to review it, is that if another criterion for positive definiteness is that all eigenvalues are positive. Very simple. The eigenvalue decomposition for any matrix X, A, which has a full set of eigenvalues, so the defective case is not positive. This will be kind of a very brief but beautiful moment because everything we've learned until now will come together into one beautiful decomposition. You guys are with me? Okay, now the columns of X are either orthogonal, that's, let's remind ourselves, what goes into X? The eigenvectors of A. What goes into lambda? The eigenvalues of A on the diagonal. From what we just learned, the column of X are already orthogonal if all of the eigenvalues are distinct. But if they're not, we can choose them to be orthogonal. So let's choose those. And now let's go a step further and choose them to be orthonormal. Right? I can normalize them, right? Make them all unit length. So that's the so that's, that's the form of the eigenvalue decomposition that I'm considering right now. Our columns are now orthonormal. That makes the matrix X what? Orthogonal. And for an orthogonal matrix, yes, bad terminology, good property. What is the inverse? It is its transpose. So now we end up with, this is what you get when you choose, when you you have arbitrariness in choice of eigenvectors. So if you chose them to be orthonormal, which you can always achieve for symmetric matrices, you have this very special form of the eigenvalue decomposition of the eigenvalue decomposition. And this is exactly the form that we have just been considering in the case of LDL transpose decomposition. And we know what makes that matrix positive. 
All we need is for the matrix in the middle to be positive definite. But this is a diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues on the diagonal. So that just means that for a matrix, for a symmetric matrix, this question can only be considered for a symmetric matrix, to be positive definite, it is necessary and sufficient for its eigenvalues to be positive. And all of that follows from this uh, what's the right word? Fabulous property of symmetric matrices combined with the idea of the eigenvalue decomposition. So we have four equivalent statements for positive definiteness. One is X transpose AX is always positive for any non-zero X. You can call that the definition if you want. If in the course of Gaussian elimination all pivots are possible, are positive. If all of the principal determinants are positive, or if all the eigenvalues are positive. Four equivalent criteria for positive definiteness. And this was just a very enjoyable property to talk about because, it's, because it makes symmetric matrices so much more special than just about any other kind of matrix. Symmetric matrices are by far my favorite and positive definite symmetric matrices are out of this world.